this evening. The outgoing head of GCOM speaks to the media. U.S. Coast Guard strike another blow to the Atlantic drug trade. One local businessman took his tax anger to the streets of Georgetown. Extensive rehabilitation to the Starbrook Wharf could mean major headaches for City Hall. In the region, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court celebrates a milestone. And internationally, the ever-controversial Kellyanne Conway is in the headlines again, this time over a photo. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with George Gonzalez. Headline News is now being streamed live on our YouTube channel, as well as our website, safetvghana.com. Join us. Who should take the helm of the Ghana Election Commission as its chairman when Dr. Steve Sergebali leaves? Andrew Weeks reports that the outgoing commissioner hosted a press conference at the GCOM head office to update the press on a number of issues. President and opposition leader are still at odds over the qualification of the Elections Commission chairman. But outgoing chairman of GCOM, Dr. Steve Sewage Bali, was asked if he can recall what the former president who appointed him as chairman by Jack Deer told him. Dr. Sewage Bali said, uh, President Jack Deer said to me, that he was not asking for favors, he was not asking for advantages, he was not asking for me to shift the goalpost uh, for his party's uh, benefit. He said he wanted me to be fair and that I should be uh, even-handed, uh, even in my beliefs, uh, the way I carry out my job. He was not seeking an advantage. He just wanted fairness. That's what he said. And I think I have followed that advice, that edict, right to the end. When further asked if he thinks Mr. Jagdeo has now shifted from his former position, Dr. Shush Bali responded. Not to me. I have never heard him come out once and said Serge Bali is a vagabond, Serge Bali uh, cheats at the election. He has never said that. No. I don't. I cannot believe, but then I'm a bit naive too, eh? I cannot believe that any political party, and if they do it, they do it with tongue in cheek or some one of their um, acolytes, some one of their persons would come out and, and make such statements, you know? But the leaders know. The leaders know. So how do you justify Donald Ramadar being in the picket line out there demanding a resignation? Was he there? Yeah. I don't think he was leader at the time. <laughs> leader was? The People's Progressive Party, they were picketing outside. He was not uh, the president, he was not the leader. Dr. Steve Switchbody believed that the future chairperson should be a judge or eligible to be a judge because the constitution appears to be prefer such a legal luminary. And his words for that person is? The issue is, for me, the crucial words would be fit and proper. And if you can get fit and proper together with judge and legal, then you've won. That's the best person ever, you know. When you look at those laws, very interestingly, this is almost an aside, and we are conversing, though I know you will put this at some point as if it were the main thrust of my, my talk and conversation with you this morning. When you read those things, it said, judge, uh, who could be judge, who has been judged, all those words. There was never a comma between those things. Then, there's a comma, all fit and proper. Bali believes that whomever is chosen must be fit and proper for a job in keeping with the constitutional requirements. Uh, as I said, if you can have a lawyer, a judge, fit and proper, having all the the positive elements uh, in his behavior and in his uh, moral makeup, then yes, that would be the best person to have. Really, I do not think that we should be taking too so long. So long. And that alone, is, there's a message in there why we are staying so long to do it. You know, the message to my mind is the elections and the 
that are coming up uh, in 2020 or whenever, it would be so serious. And uh, what results come out of that is of such great gravitas that uh, people are positioning themselves and taking a long time. They want, I would think, their chairman. The outgoing chairman made those comments on the background of disagreements between Mr. Granger and the opposition leader by Jack Dio over whether the six names submitted by the opposition leader constitute fit and proper for the position of GCOM chairman. This is the chairman's last day on the job. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. Thanks, Andrew. This morning, the protests in the city continued, but this time, people descended upon the GRA headquarters. Here's more. On the heels of the recent parking meters protest, owner of the RK Group, Rashan Khan, has staged a demonstration of his own. The message of today's protest, according to Khan, is clear. No new taxes. I know a lot of people going, it is said, the people go to private schools because they got money. People go to private hospitals because they got money. Again, an exercise in mental ludicrousity and mental stupidity in thinking, as far as I'm concerned. People make sacrifices. I know employees can't go and join line for a day, 12 hours, 24 hours, to get the medical attention. I know people want some good education for the children. So they sacrifice tremendously of all the important necessities of life in order to give their children an education and to have the, com the compunction, and to my opinion, the, 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 the moral immaturity to impose a fact on this is very unfortunate and very depressing. As a nationally known businessman, he felt that it was his responsibility to bring the nation's tax grievances to the tax collectors themselves, thus making the venue of this action the Guyana Revenue Authority headquarters on Camp Street. The controversial businessman is no stranger to public attention, nor is this the first issue he has spoken out on. Khan is also a vocal opponent of the parking meters, showing himself to be an active figure at each of this past month's protests. The turnout was small for today's protests, which Khan blames on a recent announcement from the president stating that the proposed tax on private education will be repealed. Khan believes that the move to repeal it was not magnanimous, but pragmatic. An announcement was made that he would make an announcement, but the announcement hasn't come. When, when the announcement come, I will salute him, and I will say appreciate it, but I'm going to say that I'm not going to say thank you. I respect officials of um, authority, but I'm not going to say thank you, because he didn't do that out of the kindness of his heart. He did that, he did that because of the people. The demonstrators understand the importance of revenue collection, but the imposition of taxes on education for these demonstrators was considered a bridge too far. $7,700 extra every single month. My school fees has just increased from $55,000 to $6,700 per month. I can't accept that. I have a mortgage to pay. I have a car loan to pay. I can't afford that. Mr. President, not on education, you're asking this country to go backward, to become a bunch of dunces. Given the national implications of the VAT additions, one must wonder if this movement will gain the same momentum as movement against parking meters, which only focuses on Georgetown. While a date has not been confirmed or mentioned, Khan has nonetheless implied that protests will continue. More than four tons of cocaine, worth an estimated $125 million, was found on a fishing boat in the biggest Atlantic haul in nearly 20 years. Andrew Weeks reports that the four persons on the vessel have been identified as Guyanese nationals. According to the Daily Mail News, the U.S. Coast Guard seized 4.2 tons of cocaine in the largest maritime bust of the drug in the Atlantic for nearly 20 years. Authorities seized the drugs from a boat off South America's northeastern coast, the U.S. Coast Guard said on Monday. 
about 4.2 tons of cocaine with an estimated street value of 125 million was confiscated from a fishing boat in international waters off Suriname, said Ricardo Castrodad, a spokesman for the U.S. Coast Guard in San Juan. It was reported to be the largest cocaine bust since 1999. Photos provided by the Coast Guard and U.S. Drug Enforcement Agency showed stocks of white substance piled up after the seizure. The 70-foot fishing vessel was stopped and searched by authorities February 16 during a joint patrol by crews of the U.S. Coast Guard. Carter Joseph Navier and the Coast Guard of Trinidad and Tobago, Costradat said. The crew, which is based in Port Canaraval, Florida, told the fishing vessel, the Lady Michelle, to St. Vincent and the four men on board from Guyana were taken to U.S. Virgin Islands to face criminal charges. Back at home, James Singh, head of the Guyana's Customs and Anti-Narcotics Unit, told news source that based on information and evidence presented to him, the fishing vessel Lady Michelle was last seen in Guyana in 2013. He said so far, there is no trace of the vessel being in Guyana or leaving Guyana before the bust, but the local probe will continue. The names of the men busted by the U.S. Coast Guard are Mohammed Nazim Hussein, who was the captain of the vessel, Richard Lacruz, Mark Anthony Williams, and Neville Jeffrey. Last week, U.S. agents confiscated cocaine during a routine operation in Puerto Rico, which was estimated to have a street value of $14 million. The origin and destination of the vessel have not been made known by U.S. authorities who are heading the probe. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. Thanks, Andrew. Coming up on Headline News after the break, major repairs at Stabrook could mean major headaches for City Hall. And opposition leader plays coy regarding possible candidacy. Sometimes there's just too much information to keep up with when you're pregnant. What you should and should not eat, what kind of exercise is right for you, how to handle mood changes, even how to determine when it's time for delivery. Don't let your pregnancy be a burden. Watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2 every weekday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now you can know all you need to know from conception to delivery when you watch The Baby Story. On Safe TV, Channel 2. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5554. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always is Ride Taxi Service. Let's go. It's next level time, Guyana. Let's get ready for Love and Sunshine Destination Wedding Conference and Expo coming on April 1st and 2nd, 2017 to Guyana, South America. Come enjoy the company of Joy Agnes, Destination Wedding Specialist, Mark Jennings, TV host and lifestyle expert, Jacqueline Johnson, Destination Wedding Expert, Jerry Gavaya, CEO of Rorima Group, Angie Zimmerman, Floral Expert, and Richard Markel, founder of AFWPI. Registration, U.S. $100 before March 15th, thereafter U.S. $150. Learn from the industry experts, see floral demonstrations, network at the cocktail, and benefit from educational sessions on wedding planning. Contact us for sponsorship at info at joyagnesevents.com. Love and Sunshine Destination Wedding Conference and Expo, a must for all wedding professionals. See you there. Seems like people will try just about anything to lose weight these days. But nothing works better than proper dieting and exercise. So if you're guilty of eating the wrong foods, not finding time to exercise, or can't afford a gym, join Safe TV Channel 2 for Body and Spirit. Body and Spirit. Aerobics workout with Dick Nunez. Hello, I'm Dick Nunez. Welcome to Body and Spirit Aerobics. Weekday mornings from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Don't hesitate. Act now because your greatest wealth is your health. Your this place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. 
I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. The Inter-American Development Bank loan to rebuild the Starbrook Market Wharf will take effect soon, says Mayor Patricia Chase Green. Andrew Weeks sat down with the mayor on Tuesday and reports that the removal of vendors and minibus operators from the area is worrisome for the municipality. Here's that story. As was rightly said yesterday, we would have received a copy of a letter from the Ministry of Infrastructure um, informing us of both um, the waterfront development for Starbuck Market and reading who telling. But you know we are responsible for Starbuck Market only and um, they also said to take a copy of the terms of reference for the project. It is expected that that project will come on stream sometime in 2018. Mm -hmm. But between now and 2018, the council is expected to have full consultation with the persons who occupy the wharf vendors who occupy in and around that area mm -hmm. because if you try to visualize what's going to happen there's going to be a massive um, work going on and you'll have heavy duty vehicles going in and out and you have to have storage of materials and so mayor of the city of georgetown patricia chase green what the mayor is talking about is this area you are seeing on your screen at the back of stabrook market one of the busiest areas in the city when it comes to transporting persons during the rush hours of the mornings and afternoons via speedboat or buses. Now that the repairs to the Starbuck market will take effect, Council has up to this year to decide where they are going to relocate 300 plus vendors and minibus operators. Here's Chase Green again. So we have to make some very strong decisions. I think um, this, this particular project will determine the strength and the ability for this council to deliver. Headline News took a walk through the back of the Starbrook Market Wharf. And as you can see, the dilapidated shed of the wharf is so dangerous it can collapse again at any moment. Vendors are still plying their trade in the area. The sections of the roof of the wharf had collapsed in September 2014 and March 2015. Here is the mayor on the financial aspect of the project and more. What is the IDB project along with um, the Ministry of Infrastructure? No, there will be no money expended by the council. All monies that we will have to spend will be monies that we have to spend to be probably build an extension somewhere to house those vendors. What we also have to do is look for another parking area where those minibus operators can operate from. Maybe, I don't know, it will be in close proximity of there. I don't know. But then you have you know you have a, um, the extension of the market um, stall holders going all the way up Lombard Street. I mean, that's what way I up there. You so, you, so you're going to have, so it seems to me you, know, you have to extend that even more further. Oh, no, but you couldn't think about extending that further because remember the, the heavy duty vehicles, mm. if you're having a project of that magnitude, heavy duty vehicles will have to be coming down Lombard Street to turn into the cross street to get to the back there. So it's just so dangerous. you couldn't put mm -hmm. vendors along that, that route. And so, as I said to you, it's really going to test the strength of this council. And right now, you really can't think of a place where you're going to put... Off the bottom of my head, no. Um, because it's more than like 300 persons you're talking about, vendors, it may be more. Um, then you're also looking at the minibus operators, mm -hmm. where do we put them that they can have access to? Because they want to operate where they can make the money. So as I said, it's, it's really going to test our strength and our ability to manage and to make sure that at the end of the day, in this transition period for maybe a year, two years, um, everyone is comfortable. Mayor Chairs Green said consultation will be done soon with vendors and minibus operators in a few weeks' time. A modernized design of the wharf is in place. 
The design features a two-story building with a terrace on the top flat and selling for boat to dock. But the biggest worry now is where to relocate over 300 vendors and minibus operators. We'll keep you posted. Andrew Weeks, Channel 2, Headline News. On Monday, opposition leader Barrett Jagdio spoke to the media in order to dispel rumors regarding the third-term controversy. But he remained coy when questioned about a possible 2020 presidential run. Guest correspondent Alicia Roberts has more. The thing is that the PDP supported term limits. I signed that constitutional amendment into law. That amendment has been challenged. The High Court has ruled that it was unconstitutional. The Court of Appeal has upheld that ruling by a vote of two to one. It's a fact. Opposition leader Barrett Jagger reiterated his party's support of term limits. Additionally, he insists that despite popular belief, the PPP has yet to choose their candidate. Jagdeo believes that it is foolhardy to automatically assume that he is the People's Progressive Party candidate for the 2020 elections. Given his reputation, he himself is amused by the speculation, even going as far as calling himself a terrible candidate. The most corrupt individual in there. Therefore, I'd make a terrible candidate. I'd make a terrible candidate. As General Secretary of the PPP, Jagdeo sees his role as one to prepare the party for victory in the next general elections. He outlined his responsibilities, with center around consolidating the party's voting base. This consolidation even includes reaching out to the afro guyanese who traditionally support the PNC. When questioned about his own presidential aspirations, he was not direct. Alicia Roberts reporting for Channel 2 Headline News. And we are selecting the candidate, then you will hear from me whether I'm interested or not. But I'm not going to play into this media, media frenzy about and speculation about that. If you want to speculate, you go ahead. Thanks, Alicia. Still ahead, Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court celebrates major milestone, and Kellyanne Conway creates social media buzz again. Sometimes there's just too much information to keep up with when you're pregnant. What you should and should not eat, what kind of exercise is right for you, how to handle mood changes, even how to determine when it's time for delivery. Don't let your pregnancy be a burden. Watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2 every weekday from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Now you can know all you need to know from conception to delivery when you watch The Baby Story on Safe TV Channel 2. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always is Ride Taxi Service. Let's go. It's next level time, Guyana. Let's get ready for Love and Sunshine Destination Wedding Conference and Expo coming on April 1st and 2nd, 2017 to Guyana, South America. Come enjoy the company of Joy Agnes, Destination Wedding Specialist, Mark Jennings, TV host and lifestyle expert, Jacqueline Johnson, Destination Wedding Expert, Jerry Gavaya, CEO of Roraima Group, Angie Zimmerman, Floral Expert, and Richard Markel, founder of AFWPI. Registration, U.S. $100 before March 15th, thereafter U.S. $150. Learn from the industry experts, see floral demonstrations, network at the cocktail, and benefit from educational sessions on wedding planning. Contact us for sponsorship at info at joyagnesevents.com. Love and Sunshine Destination Wedding Conference and Expo, a must for all wedding professionals. See you there. Seems like people will try just about anything to lose weight these days. But nothing works better than proper dieting and exercise. 
So if you're guilty of eating the wrong foods, not finding time to exercise or can't afford a gym, join Safe TV Channel 2 for Body and Spirit. Body and spirit. Aerobics Workout with Dick Nunes. Hello, I'm Dick Nunes. Welcome to Body and Spirit Aerobics. Weekday mornings from 7 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. Don't hesitate. Act now because your greatest wealth is your health. Your What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babes? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air condition units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225-7867. In news from the region now, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court is celebrating its Golden Jubilee and its Chief Justice says 50 years in existence is, by any measure, a signature milestone. The court held a special sitting in Castries on February 27th. HTS News Force reports. Dame Janice M. Pereira says for the past half century, the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court has been striving to improve the quality of justice for all in its nine member states and territories. The court is celebrating its 50th anniversary with activities across its jurisdiction. On Monday, February 27th, the court held a special sitting in Cash Trees. Her ladyship, the court's first female chief justice, addressed the sitting via video link. She says the ECSC has been able to dispense justice with the highest degree of integrity and remains steadfast in ensuring its independence. The Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court as an institution has continued to be a shining example for courts all over the world. We must do all within our power to maintain and if anything to improve upon that image. Critically, all must be done to ensure it is not diminished or lost. The court, headquartered in Castries, was inaugurated on February 27, 1967. It replaced the Supreme Court of the Windward and Leeward Islands. Attorney General Stephen Julian says it is disheartening that the court is celebrating its golden anniversary in court's borrowed premises. He is calling for adequate resources for the court. How can the court serve as our centuries for the preservation of the rule of law when they struggle for resources? We need only tune in to the news to help the daily onslaught on the courts as persons cry out for justice. The irony is that over the years this perception has been fueled by those who determine the allocation of resources. Civil society must acknowledge that an undersubscribed judiciary is incapable of serving as our collective shield against the abyss of dystopia. Acting Director of Public Prosecution Dazrian Green says despite the hurdles and periods of adversity, there is cause for celebration as the court marks its big 50. The court's mission statement is to serve its member states by providing access to a system of justice that is accountable and independent and administered by officers in a prompt, fair, efficient and effective manner. But for the term efficient, I can safely submit to you that I am of the view that this honorable court has met its goals thus far. However, I wish to stress that it is through no fault of its own that this prized and cherished institution finds some of its members wanting with regard to the efficient and timely dispensation of matters arising before the courts. The theme for the ECSC's golden anniversary is celebrating the past, embracing the future. The Chief Justice says it is a reminder to all citizens of the OECS that together, the long-standing tradition of the courts can be sustained by learning from the past, building on the strengths 
adapting to change and embracing the future. And internationally, photos of White House advisor Kellyanne Conway kneeling on an Oval Office couch have created a buzz on social media. CNN reports. Hey, just seen all the new memes of White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway from this original picture taken from the Oval Office yesterday. So it happened to be during a meeting of the members of the historically black colleges and universities. And um, people can't get over how casually Kellyanne is sitting there with her knees on the couch. But some people note her shoes are still on. Uh, I think for herself, she was saying, I, I'm getting the picture. I'm getting the, the right shot, the right angle. And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and SafeTVGhana.com. You can also tune in at 6.30 tomorrow morning for a rebroadcast, and Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from this newscast. Thank you for welcoming us into your homes, and do have a blessed evening.